I'm Marta Riematz, founder and CEO of Riematz Automobile. Over the past eight years, the goal has shifted. It started with a dream to make my own car. And now we consider ourselves as a technology company, pushing the limits of electric vehicles and building the next generation of electric sports cars. Most of the things we do here, we can't talk about and I can't show you because the customers require us not to show it. But uh, some of the interesting projects are right here. So this is the Koenig Regera battery pack and we are very fortunate that Koenigsegg lets us um, to talk about it. So this is a project that we started more than three years ago. It was extremely demanding. Uh, it, we had to squeeze in so much power into so little space to make that system that Koenigsegg, that Christian has made up in his mind to make it work. Because in the available space that we had here, we had to put in uh, 500 kilowatts of power, uh, which is quite crazy given the, the space that we had. Um, so it's a very extreme system. And while this is the world's highest power density battery pack, you know, there is not a simple answer to what's the best battery in the world. There is not one single answer to that. Just for examples, this is a battery cell that's used in Formula One and in racing, but also in the Koenigsegg uh, project. Here, this is a cell we use for racing application, uh, so fully uh, electric uh, racing series. Um, this is a cell that we use for a big family car of a big car manufacturer. So each of them has its pros and cons, and we use them based on the ideal, um, ideal requirements for that project. So we use all of them for different projects. So in some projects, we use this cell. Uh, in other projects, we use eight and a half thousand of these cells in one single car. It's always a compromise between performance, cost, lifetime, safety, uh, longevity. A um, lot of different factors influence the battery pack. And when designing the battery, all of them have to be taken into consideration. So there is not one single answer, which is the battery to go. And the battery always has to be considered as a whole system, not just one of the requirements like fast recharge time, which you can achieve maybe with some batteries, but then you uh, have a lot of problems in other areas of the performance, like discharge rate or uh, energy density and things like that. You could mix and match uh, the cells in the same car. So take an energy dense battery and a power dense battery and put them together. But then you have a lot of overhead to make those two systems work so that the energy flows between the two different packs and the powertrain and that both are regulated and discharged at the right rate and charged at the right rate because the energy dense cell you have to discharge slowly while the power dense cell you, you can discharge and charge much faster. But what we try to achieve is always um, come up with a solution that has both energy density and power density exactly matched for the project so that we don't have this overhead which is not adding any value in the end. It's just uh, making the compromise between the two different um, requirements, energy density and power density. But there's lots of other stuff. For each project there is, um, let's say, different cooling system. So we can cool by air, by refrigerant gas, non-conductive liquid, flooded, semi-flooded, uh, water-cooled, water glycol, uh, with heat plates, with uh, heat sinks, uh, with uh, bus bar cooling. So there is a lot of variance and for each project it's usually a combination of different factors. And if you look at the batteries that are produced here, most of them look completely different. So the Koenigsegg battery pack looks completely different from the Concept One battery pack, which looks completely different from a battery pack we do for a big manufacturer. So there is no one single answer to answer all of the requirements of electric cars. It's always going to be some special requirements for different applications. So as an example, here in the Koenigsegg project, our guys were fighting with the Koenigsegg guys over every millimeter because the package was so tight. So for example, where the driver's foot goes on the throttle pedal, there is a small um, shape in the battery pack to allow for that. And over this couple of millimeters, our guys were arguing for months with the Koenigsegg guys because every millimeter counted. Uh, so safety is also a very big aspect of batteries, of course. 
um, and we have learned a lot during the years and a lot of the development went into the safety. So here we have like six safety layers in the battery pack. Uh, the first layer is electronics, which keep all cells aligned and within the operating parameters in terms of voltage, current, uh, temperatures, and so on. Then we have mechanical uh, systems inside. So the cooling system, that's the first uh, line of defense. Uh, if a single cell failure happens, we have material around the cell which self-extinguishes the cell so that it can't uh, spread, the thermal runaway can't spread to surrounding cells. If for whatever reason that happens and surrounding cells get affected or more cells fail at the same time, then we have developed a special material to keep the thermal runaway within the module. So if there is a fire, the fire should stay within the module. And then again on the pack level, there are safety layers to keep it inside of the battery pack and to release the pressure to where it can go. So there is different uh, layers of safety and it's pretty much impossible to breach all of them at the same time. Of course, these kind of things need time and get developed over time. So the safety mechanisms, for example, in the Koenigsegg battery are much further advanced and much higher than we had in our first original batteries. So this is a development battery for the Concept1. This is an old system. So the Concept1 is a fully electric car, obviously, with very high performance. So the issue is to get very high power, but at the same time we need energy to have a decent range. Hybrids like the Aston Martin Valkyrie or the Koenigsegg Regera, they have a big combustion engine, so the battery only needs to provide power and a small amount of energy to act as a buffer. While this battery in the Concept1 has to do both, so it's the only energy source in the car. This is 19 kilowatt hours, so this is enough to provide one megawatt of power to the car, so over 1,300 horsepower, but at the same time it has to provide 350 kilometers of range. So this battery does both of these things quite well, and at the same time it should not be too heavy. It is, because it's still the battery's limitation, but the electric powertrain, the motors, the power density of the motors and the other components and the, um, the package of the other components makes up for it. Of course, it's still a little bit heavier than uh, traditionally powered supercars, but if you compare the Concept1 to, the, to a Bugatti Veyron, it's about the same weight. But just because the motors are so good, we can have a decent range. If you look at the energy content of this battery, which is 90 kilowatt hours, which is still quite big for electric cars, it is only, it is the same energy like nine liters of fuel contain. So all of this is necessary to uh, store energy in the same amount like nine liters of fuel, which are then enough to get the car 350 kilometers far. And that's only possible because of the efficiency of electric motors. So batteries have come a long way and they are, it is possible to store enough energy in them for a decent range, but compared to gas as an energy um, storage device or as, a, or as an energy storage medium, batteries are still very far. So the energy density of batteries is far worse than, than uh, fuel, but the whole system makes up for it.